But even more important than the element of melody is the element of rhythm. Rhythm is the first thing you associate with the word jazz when you hear it. There are two aspects to this. The first is very simple. It's the beat. The beat is the thing you hear when the drummer's foot is beating on the bass drum or when the bass player is plucking on his bass fiddle or even when the pianist is kicking the pedal with his foot. <laughs> So on. All this is very elementary. This beat just goes on from the beginning to the end of any jazz number, two or four of them to a bar, never changing in tempo or in meter. This we could call the heartbeat of jazz. But more involved and much more interesting is the stuff that goes on over this beat. And this is rhythmic figuration which depends on something called syncopation. This is a word you've certainly heard of but maybe we're never quite sure of. The best way to describe it might be as a heartbeat which goes along steadily and then at a moment of shock misses a beat. It is that much of a physical reaction. Technically, syncopation means either of two things. Either the removal of an accent from a strong beat where it belongs or the putting of an accent on a weak beat where it doesn't belong. In either case, the body responds to this syncopation. It compensates, on the one hand, for the missing accent, or else it reacts to the unexpected accent. Now, where is it we expect accents? Naturally, always on the first beat of a bar, what we call the downbeat. If there are two beats in a bar, one, two, one, two, it's one that gets the accent. That's the strong note. Just as in marching, we march one, two, one, two, or left, right, left, right. If we march left, right, left, right, we're marching in jazz, but it's not very military. Now, even if we are uh, having four beats in a bar, the same thing is true. You've noticed that sergeants are always very fond of counting out marching in four, even though we have only two legs, and they say, up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four. This hop is the natural accent on one. Now, if you take it away, you have a simple syncopation. It would go this way. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. You see that this missing accent on the first beat evokes a body response. Now, the other way to do a syncopation is exactly the opposite, putting an accent on a weak beat where it doesn't belong. These weak beats are two and four. So if we go, if this same sergeant, let's say, goes hop, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, then he will be making a syncopation or counting out jazzily. Now, those are two ways to make syncopations, and those are the basic facts of syncopation. Now we're in a position to understand the subtler aspects of it. Every beat has between it and the next one even shorter and weaker beats. And when these get accented, the shock is even greater because since the weaker the beat you accent the greater the surprise now let's take eight of these fast beats in a bar one two three four five six seven eight the normal beat accents will fall on the first and the fifth one two three four five six seven eight now instead we're not going to accent the fifth we're going to accent the fourth which is an unsuspecting little weak beat and we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you, boys. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you see, simply by accentuating this weak fourth beat, we got a rumba. Now, obviously, the strongest syncopation of all can be obtained by doing both processes at once, accenting a weak beat and minimizing the accent on a strong beat. So in the same group of eight fast beats, we're going to do what we did just now, put an accent on four, but we're also going to take away completely the fifth beat, which was strong. And we will get one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. One. You see, it begins to sound like the Congo, doesn't it?